If you are looking for a great third-party battery option for your Sony mirrorless camera, then this one from Small Rig may just be the model to get. Because in this video, we're going to talk about Small Rig's NPFC100 USB-C rechargeable battery and answer the question as to whether this is just as good, if not even better, than Sony's own batteries themselves. Now, for full disclosure, Small Rig sent me this battery to do a review on. No money exchanged hands. They do not get any input into this video, nor do they get to see it before I post it, but I do get to keep the battery as an FYI. Now, of course, we're talking about the NPFZ100 battery specifically in this case, which I use in a lot of my Sony mirrorless cameras like the a7 IV here, as well as the a7S III, the a7R5, etc. However, it is worth noting that this is just one of many different options you could purchase for this specific battery. Small Rig makes versions of this battery for Canon, Nikon, even other Sony batteries like the NPFW50 that gets used in a lot of Sony's smaller APS-C cameras, as well as some of their older models. Now, at its core, you basically have yet just another NPFZ100 battery. Battery. It's going to look very similar and contain the same design and construction that Sony's own OEM batteries have. And yes, because of this, this means you can charge it in Sony's official BCQZ1 charger for the NPFC100 battery. And also worth mentioning along those same lines that this is a 5 volt battery that supports fast charging. So this, just like a regular NPFC100 battery, should charge in around two and a half hours in Sony's official chargers. And that is also a very nice benefit as well. However, along the lines of interesting features that you won't find in a regular NPFC100 battery, you will see that this small rig model does include a USB-C port. And that is because, yes, not only can you charge this with a regular Sony battery charger, but you can also charge this with an included USB-C cable. And if you're charging via USB-C, an LED indicator on the front of the battery will tell you when it is charging and when it's complete. So perhaps a slight nod here to the small rig over, say, a regular NPFC 100 battery. Now, of course, using this with your Sony camera is just like any other battery. Once you popped open the battery door on your camera, you can insert it as you would any other. You close it up, and you are good to go. Now, yes, Smallrig states that this battery should not have any pop-ups when you boot up your camera or display any warnings about this being a third-party battery. If I'm being honest, it seems like newer Sony cameras or new versions of firmware for existing cameras are starting to catch up to this and now display a warning. This ultimately isn't a big concern, and in fact, most other third-party batteries will display a warning when you boot the camera up, and therefore this would just be like any other third-party battery in that case. As to the blue color, I imagine some might like it, others might not, but it's a battery that's going to live inside your camera most of the time, and so I wouldn't place too much emphasis on it. And in terms of what comes with the battery itself, the battery comes in a nice box from Small Rig. You have a very tiny set of user instructions for what it's worth. The battery also comes with a small battery cover, and as noted previously, a USB Type-A to Type-C cable that you can use to charge the battery. So to talk about the one topic everyone's probably going to wonder about this, yes, let's address battery life. So yes, the small rig battery is rated at a 2400 milliamp hour capacity, and interestingly enough, that is actually slightly above the 2280 milliamp hours that the regular NPFC100 battery has itself. But in truth, specs are specs, how do these things actually fare in the real world? I did a test with my Sony a7R5 shooting a 4K 24 frames per second video, basically continuously in manual focus, manual white balance, trying to reduce variables there, and performed this test using two regular Sony NPFC100 batteries, and then also performed one using the small rig. And the results I got were very interesting. So in Sony battery number one, the camera recorded up to two hours, 19 minutes, and 46 seconds before the camera powered off. I would say this largely tracked with my expectations of the a7R5 and its battery life and what I've seen over time. And with the second NPFC100 battery, this recorded up to 2 hours, 17 minutes, and 24 seconds before the camera powered off. So we're really talking a difference of just a couple of minutes between each of the regular Sony NPFC100 batteries, showing we we're getting a pretty consistent result here. Now with the small rig battery, this recorded up to 2 hours, 18 minutes, and 4 seconds, which comes in almost squarely in between the two official Sony batteries batteries, and quite frankly, matches that capacity almost identically, you might say. Now, in fairness, I've probably used these official Sony NPFC100 batteries dozens of times by now, and I've had them for, let's say, a year or two at this point. The small rig battery I'd probably used around 10 times or so when I attempted this test. Also worth noting, in my many times testing and using this battery, I never noticed any issues with battery life or capacity, and in fact, this pretty much operated just as any other NPFC100 battery would. And really, that's all you could ask for. And yes, maybe that's not a long-term indicator of how how this thing will hold up over time, but I would say, pound for pound, these things are roughly the same when it comes to their own battery life. Now, of course, when talking about why you'd want to even purchase a third-party battery option versus an official Sony one, we should talk about price. Whereas a regular NPFC100 battery is going to typically retail from around $78 to $80 US, the small rig is only going to come in at around a fraction of that cost, typically retailing for around $45 to $50 US. 
which of course is probably going to beg the question of, is getting a third-party battery like this worth it? Frankly, if you want to pay only a little over 50% of the cost of a regular Sony NPFC 100 battery, get the same amount of charging capacity as a regular battery while also getting some additional features like that USB-C charging option we discussed, I think this is a really good battery option for Sony shooters out there. And in fact, if you're the type of person that typically goes with third-party batteries over regular OEM models, this unit is probably the go-to third-party battery option moving forward, I would say. Whether you choose to go the third-party route or not is ultimately going to be your decision, but if you're going that route, I do not think you can go wrong with the small rig. So that is my take on small rig's NPFC 100 replacement battery for Sony's cameras. Hopefully this video has been of some help to you. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it has. I have some other interesting battery and battery life related videos on the channel that I will leave above and in the description below that you can check out. And yes, there will be more on the way. For now, that's all I have to say. So thanks for watching.